years later, here we are again um, asking for your permission to update the, the policy. So um, attached to the report was the, is the you know proposed policy. I don't know if you had a chance to peruse it, but um, uh, it's there for your information as well. Uh, the changes what we'll walk through today are some some changes to the limits as far as when does a when do we need to RFQ when do we publicly tender um, some comparisons to municipalities and and uh, counties in the surrounding area uh, just to sh kind of show you that I think we're in line um, how do we award when we uh, when our tenders come in over budget. Um, we have a scope and contract change policy in uh, our section in our policy that um, is, is going to be tweaked a little bit as well. Um, and um, so, and also an update to authority to award. So giving the directors a little bit more, um, uh, I guess, money to award before it comes to council. And number six is kind of when will you see us? When are we going to be here at council? So that the chart there shows um, um, current versus what we're proposing today. So anything that's a direct purchase, so no procurement policy or no procurement is required up to 5,000, that's staying the same. We've added an informal quote process that we'd like, if you're spending up to 10, um, like to at least get some some emails, um, three quotes. It's not going to go through necessarily our office, but these are minimums. So if anyone wants our help, we're obviously there. Um, currently, our RFQs go from five to twenty-five. We're proposing that goes from ten to seventy-five. What that means is, um, if you have something that you have three or four bidders that you want to invite, you can. Um, again. If you don't have those, we're there, those uh, vendors to lean on, we're there to help and we can put it out publicly. But the requirement is um, anything over 75,000 would go to public. And we're changing the council award to go from anything over 250,000 to over 500,000. And the single source has changed a little bit as well. Um, we're asking you to move it to 75,000, but there's a wrinkle there that the request to single source has to come from a director and it needs to be approved by the director of corporate services. So, um, again, these numbers are all um, in uh, making sure you understand that these are, um, at, you know, after a process um, for items that are already on, on the approved capital budget. So, um, I'm not sure how much time you want to spend there or how, if you can even see it, but. Um, if you look, we've got the municipali municipalities down the left-hand side, um, and we've tried to compare where we're going on the top to you know, our neighbors. Um, so direct purchase is very standard, uh, except for Bruce. Um, the RFQs, are, our proposal of 10 to 75 is in line with um, you know, Simcoe and Bruce. Um, same with tenders. Um, I will note that the council award, we're asking you to up that to anything over 500,000. Um, Bruce, Dufferin, and Simcoe all, if it's within budget, um, it's unlimited, so they don't come to council to award. Um, and then there's the, the, the notes on single source in there. Um, so what happens when the tenders come in over budget? Currently, it's a little bit of a, a roadmap. Currently, if, if it's budgeted under 100 and comes in over budget by 10,000 or more, we ask that the Director of Corporate Services and the CAO approve. And anything that's budgeted between 100 and 250 that come in over budget by 10% or more has to come back to Council. We'd like to change that and allow um, staff to spend up to 20% over budget um, under hundred under five hundred thousand um, dollars, with the and then anything that's in excess of that would I need the approval of the CAO and the director of corporate services. That's under under five hundred. Keep in mind, you will be notified of all these purchases on the quarterly report, um, and also of note, um, if staff or directors don't have the cash to do a certain capital project, they are not they do not have the authority to 
to delete items that are in the capital project to fund it, that would, they would need to come back here. Further to that, um, they can't use their reserves. That, that again, is a, is a report to uh, council. Uh, again, this is something that I don't know that a lot of uh, purchasing policies have in place, but this is for once you've made the award and you've gotten into the job and you have contract changes, unforeseen things. Um, what we're suggesting is moving that number from 50 to 75. So any change orders or contract changes that are in excess of $7,500 for a job that's 75,000 and under, um, must be approved by the Director of Corporate Services. And then for projects that are awarded over $75,000, if you have a 10% change order, it's gotta be approved by the Director of Corporate Services and the CAO, so that's new. Um, of note, we also have in there that if you have been awarded something in excess of $500,000 and you have change orders exceeding 20%, we've asked that an information report come back to let you folks know that what's happened, where the money's being funded from, and um, just to let you know that we've gone over that by that 20%, which is a significant amount. So who's got the authority to award? Um, any employee is authorized by the director can spend 5,000 or less. Uh, managers up from uh, 25 to 10,000, again, as by, uh, by director. Um, and then managers and supervisors as authorized by director from 5,000 to, I'm not sure why that says that. Um, I should just say between five and $75,000. And then the director on our alternate, it should be uh, $75,000 to 500,000. And again, council will approve anything in excess of 500,000. Um, when will we come and see you? So this is just kind of to summarize when we come uh, to council, any contract exceeding 500,000, we've removed that uh, line, line item B. Uh, any acquisition of goods that is not already in the approved uh, budget. Um, any contract where the award is not being recommended to the lowest compliant bidder, which hasn't happened in my lifetime here. Um, Again, any contract anticipated to be financed by debentures or that catch-all where authority to award has not been expressly delegated. The quarterlies will continue to um, be presented. Um, these will be between 75 and 500,000. And any time we have revenue in excess of 75 and that is specific to uh, our forest management. And again, the change order information report for anything that's 25% over a $500,000 um, project. Every procurement policy has an exemption list. Uh, ours is part of your package. Um, we've added a note to say that when procurement process will allow, we will actually tender uh, damage or insurance claims. Uh, we've added banking and financial services, hairstyling and barbering services, and clergy services. Those are specific to the long-term care homes that have proven to be very difficult to um, effectively RFP. So again, um, I mean, uh, that 40-page document is there. I'm willing to answer any questions you have on procurement, the policy updates. Okay, thanks, Mike. Uh, I got a question from Councillor Millen. Thank you, Mr. Warden. And contrary to what you suggest, Mike, any department or report that the young Melville girl is involved with, I know is exciting. <laughs> but specifically, my question is um, the upper limits for going public, um, I think, makes it somewhat more difficult for some of our smaller suppliers in the immediate area to know of uh, so it makes it difficult for them to uh, bid on some of these projects, so to speak. Um, is, is there a way to make sure that the smaller suppliers are still aware of the requirements that might be needed going forward? Uh, 
I mean, if it's not uh, advertised publicly, they may not know about it. They, they're, they're willing to, or they're able to, of course, look at the approved capital budget, which is online. Um, of course, I mean, it is by invitation, so those that are working for the county will, will invite who they're used to working with, who do, does a good job, who will actually, you know, I'm sure we're all experiencing the same thing. We're having troubles getting people to quote on a lot of jobs because everyone is, is busy. Um, so to answer your question, they'll only know by either uh, understanding what's in the capital budget or making contact with county staff, myself included. If I can just add, I think all of us are constantly on the lookout for people that we can work with for the reason that Mike just gave, which is that it be becoming increasingly difficult to get people to um, participate in some of these um, more structured procurement activities when we put RFPs out and that. That's why part of the reason why the thresholds have been raised here was because people just don't have time to put into it. It's also why we've asked for the for everybody to be responsible for getting quotes, right? We want more of our staff to be experienced in thinking about what they need and, and going out to make sure that they are getting the best value for everyone. Are there any further questions? Councilor Sorever. Under Appendix B, um, the authority for payment, is more than one signature required at a certain level or is it just one? It all depends, actually. It goes department to department. They authorize staff to sign invoices. It's not something that I necessarily, well, I don't see invoices. Um, so to answer your question, some directors authorize managers to approve invoices up to a certain amount and some directors sign everything. So it's, it's by delegation um, as far as who, who has to sign. A follow-up, the uh, reason I'm asking is I think it was Calgary where there was a, where a person had a little bit of a, a slip and did send several million dollars to the wrong place and then I know that in private industry we have you know for any payments over a certain amount there's two signatures just in case the person's having a slow day. Kevin you had a comment? Part of our payable entries is that all those batches are, are double checked so they get the, the list of invoices and, and the, the person that keyed and another person that is checking amounts, taxes, the vendor who we're paying and that so we do have a double check process going through as well as when the when the, the before the for an EFT batch is sent to the bank or uh, check run is uh, done those are reviewed by fi another finance staff member as well to, to see if we can see if there's some anomaly why we're paying this vendor when the when the description says office supplies for example and it's a contractor or something like that so we're, we're trying to put as many many checks in as we can. asking but I know I sign our checks in our municipality and I've caught more than one just by that double double look right so we're paying a vendor twice <laughs> no <laughs> no I wouldn't catch that one would I <laughs> are there any other questions okay Mike uh, I see no more questions uh, it's moved and second all in favor that is Need a mover and a seconder, please, for the report coming forward. Uh, Councilor Burley, Councilor Mackey. Floor is yours, Heather. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Um, so, for the final report of today, uh, we have the annual uh, appointment report before you for consideration. Uh, as you'll note by the chart included in their report, uh, there is an election required for the Economic Development and Planning Advisory Committee. The membership for this committee is six councillors plus the warden, and those terms of reference were changed last year at council's direction. There are seven councillors who indicated an interest in sitting on that committee, so unless um, we have a councillor who is interested in withdrawing their name 
from that committee that um, at the end of this, there will be an election required for that committee. And while there are seven on there and we have a number of uh, councillors that have extensive experience in economic development, it's also a public um, committee as well with a number of members on there from the public. So we do need to be cognizant that we, we have a balance between council members and members of the public. Uh, there was to be an election for the CAO evaluation committee, but Councillor Desai sorry, has indicated his desire to withdraw his name um, at this time. So no election will be required, and the committee, if endorsed by Council, will consist of Councillors Millen, Bartnicki, Hutchinson, Boddy, and Warden McQueen. Uh, Council, also, Council also sees a recommendation to expand the membership of the Long-Term Care Committee of Management from four Councillors in the Warden to six due to the interest and the upcoming projects that this committee will be um, providing direction on. The Long-Term Care Committee of Management met earlier this week and we're supportive of that direction. And this membership is certainly in line with the EDPAC committee as well. At the time of the report, when I asked for um, com your committee appointment interest, Warden McQueen and Councillor Keaveny were the only ones who put their names forward for the membership on the Gray County Blue Mountain Task Force. A task force by its general nature is short-lived and to accomplish certain tasks. The terms of reference for this task force speak to examining issues of common concern to both the town and the county and bring forward recommendations to address these concerns as well as information sharing. Um, the task force was established in 2017 and right now it's staff's recommendation that we bring back a report that provides the history of that task force the issues that have been reviewed um, by that task force and brought forward to both respective councils and the future of that uh, task force for council's consideration. It's also recommended that all other appointments um, as noted in the report with the exception of um, uh, just a, a slight deviation under the Gray County Federation of Agriculture that um, Councillor Robinson be the main um, appointee and Warden McQueen be the alternate. Um, all other uh, recommendation or all other appointments are outlined in the report and I'm happy to take any questions before we do an election for the Economic Development and Planning Advisory Committee. Thanks Heather and questions, uh, Councillor Swever. Yes, my, my question concerns the Blue Mountains uh, Great County Task Force. Um, this has been a very valuable tool in, in, in calming some of the angst in our community about you know how much we're spending and providing information back. And it does meet publicly um, here and also at the Town of Blue Mountains. And there have been members of the community that have attended and it does kind of provide explanations which seem to soothe uh, some of the angst because as, as you know um, we, we, we do have ultra high assessments and this has led to us funding 26% of the county and I dare say with the supplementary we found in the growth we may soon be 30. So um, it is important that we do keep this going and um, I know there 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 is a short list, but I understand there may be some other councillors that may step up. Um, we, I, it's only been in existence one year under the new council. As you know, we got an entirely new council and we are trying to promote the county and explain to people what the county does bring because people don't really know that they're in Gray County. Well, they don't even know they're in the Blue Mountains often. They think they're in Collingwood, but because... Um, <laughs> That dinner we, w we went to on uh, the lunch we went to on the weekend at the Toronto Ski Club, I, I did some research on the Toronto Ski Club and the first thing you see on their webpage is the Toronto Ski Club is located in Collingwood. So, um, but in fact, it's in our community. So there are some identity issues and I think this uh, task force is extremely useful in, in, in building the brand of Gray County in the town of Blue Mountains and, you know, explaining to people that they are part of Gray County and that we are talking. And if this were to be blown up, um, I dare say that people would see this as a rejection by Gray County and would start looking a lot more strongly toward 
a region of South Georgian Bay, which would include uh, us and uh, Collingwood and maybe Wasaga Beach and Clearview and maybe some other municipalities. So I think it is important and I think there may be people that would step up. Uh, hopefully there will be. Thank you. Heather, do you have any comments to that? Um, I don't, other than the recommendation is there for Council's consideration because we didn't have the um, information or the um, interest from Council members, it needed to be brought forward for discussion. So maybe while it's on the floor, are there, okay, Councillor uh, Desai. Um, thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Warden. Um, I'll put my name forward for the uh, Town of Blue Mountains Task Force. I'll, I'll be putting my name forward for the Town of Blue Mountains Task Force. Councilor Matt. Thank you, Warden. And I'll also put my name forward for the task force. But I would like to see that there's a time limit put on it. You know, any task force needs to have a job that's completed. And, you know, this shouldn't be a four year term thing. But I certainly, you know, understand our friends from the Blue Mountains. I, I know that there's some frustration over there. And I think it's important that if we have one of our, our members that have that frustration in their community, that we do what we can to try to alleviate that. So I'll certainly put my name forward. Okay, Councillor Miller. Thank you, Mr. Warden. And with the understanding that the report from staff regarding the task force will still come forward, that's the recommendation as it stands now, though, correct? Okay, thank you. Okay, any other comments then? So, Councillor Mackey. Thank you, Warden McQueen. Through you to Heather. Uh, we did talk at the uh, long-term care management about ex expanding the uh, the numbers, and I think that's a great idea. If we have members of council that are interested in participating, you know, in something that's important, economic development to me is just as important. And we have seven members that are, are interested in doing it. I'm not sure that it wouldn't hurt to add one more member to that. I I understand what you're saying in regards to the number of community members. Would one more though really offset the balance i guess is my question so who would like to answer that heather no economic development. Okay. okay um i actually don't know how many public members are sitting on that so i would look to our cao or our director of planning or director of economic development to let me know no. In any case, th this is this is council's direction to provide to us. If you feel that you want to add another person to economic development, we can certainly accommodate that. We just need to be careful that um, we don't get to the point where we have quorum, because then it's not a committee anymore. So, so as long as we're within those thresholds, if if more people want to be on it, that's we can make that happen. Absolutely. So, so generally from staff perspective or who's been there, has there always been a good turnout of people? So that hasn't been an issue. And they usually meet in the morning? Yeah. yeah. What time? Um, eight okay, so. Councillor Mackey. Thank you, Mr. Warden. So in light of that, I would certainly be willing to move that we increase the number on the Economic Development Committee by one additional member to seven. Uh, do I have a seconder for that? Councilor Robinson. So this is like an amendment to the motion that's there. Okay. So we have a mo uh, amendment. You wish to speak to it, Councilor Robinson? Or uh, Mr. Warden, just a question for you and, and um, uh, perhaps for the clerk. Within this motion, is it possible to also include the appointments to the Blue Mountains Task Force? I can go to the mover and seconder. Is that something that... Councilor Mackey? I was speaking specific. I was speaking specifically to the economic development. Okay, so maybe we'll do one separate. I was going to say, if we're doing an amendment for committee changes, 
if it's okay with the mover and seconder, we certainly could put them all in one amendment. Okay. And that, so for Tara's sake, the, um, we'll still bring back a staff report on the Blue Mountains Task Force, but the task force members then will be Warden McQueen, um, Councillors Keeveny, Desai, and Mackey. Is there any other discussion on the amended or the motion to amend the original motion? Councillor O'Leary. Is that including the extra then with long term care? Okay. Right. Okay. Any other questions to that amendment? Oh, we got Randy. Go ahead, Randy. Sorry, just, just the further question in terms of how many members of the public are on the current Economic Development Planning Advisory Committee. There's a total of seven. So there's a Georgian College representative, a Grey Bruce Health Services representative, representative of the Grey Bruce Health Unit, an Air Cultural representative, and three members of, of the public, business representatives. So a total of, total of seven. Council Swerver. On the... Um, Town of Blue Mountains Task Force. So we have the members. So the staff report, what is the purpose of the staff report? Um, um, is it to recommend whether it continues or not, or is that the intent in bringing that back? Heather, or see you. If I can, what I've heard from our discussion this afternoon is that um, the report would provide a summary of the work done today, the current terms of reference, and then talking about both the work that could be accomplished this year and whether or not it's possible for Council to determine an end date to the task force. Okay, there's a motion on the floor to amend the original motion. Is there any other discussion? Everybody understand the motion? Okay, all in favor? Opposed, that's carried. All right, so now going back to the original motion, uh, the, the mover and seconder were, help me out, Tara. The original mover and seconder was, I think, was it Mackey? Burley and Mackey, okay. So that's been a change, you're all right with that. The original motion, um, Sorry, uh, Councillor Mellon. Thank you, Mr. Warden. I'm wondering, after uh, hearing from Councillor Mackey, uh, indeed there is a lot of interest in the long-term care committee, um, and rightly so. I'm wondering, is there any appetite uh, from Council to bring that committee to Committee of the Whole? Um, Procedurally, I think we're allowed to do that, are we, uh, Kim? The Committee of the Whole can, can uh, or Madam CEO, rather, are we allowed to act as Committee of Management as a Committee of the Whole? I believe that's, oh, sorry. My understanding is, yes, that's true, because um, in the past, it was our Social Services Committee that performed that function, so as long as we have a body that has, has that designation, we're in compliance with the regulation. So if I might, Mr. Warden, my point was, I wonder if there is interest in doing that because there is a lot of interest. Um, it is going to affect all of our communities, either financially or directly from employment and other uh, standpoints. Um, maybe it's time to bring it back to Committee of the Whole. Thank you, uh, Councillor Miller. Is there any uh, thoughts or discussion on that point? Councillor Mackey? Uh, I think that there's certainly some more information that probably needs to be brought back in regards to the overall, uh, you know, redevelopment, but there's a lot of things the Committee of Management has to look at that has to do with day-to-day -day operations that, in all fairness, I think would uh, be very time-consuming for the Committee of the Whole to do. So when you're looking at uh, incident reports that are occurring within the facilities, when you're looking at wound care compared to the provincial averages. Those are, are other things that the committee has to look at on a regular basis that may not be of interest to the entire um, committee of the whole. Okay, I'm gonna take Councillor Boddy and then I'll take Councillor Mellon. Councillor Boddy. Thanks, those are, those are good uh, points from Councillor uh, Mackey because it seems to me the we set up that committee, it was kind of to um, 
review work with Sienna was kind of the, the idea in the actual uh, uh, management of, uh, of the beds that we provide. I, I wonder then if, uh, listening to both comments, if, if the idea is uh, that we should have a report back to figure out how we deal with the uh, big development decisions uh, at the Committee of the Whole and let the Committee of Management deal with just those ongoing management things and how you'd identify those things and split them because I agree with you. There's management things and, I, and by my memory that's what the committee was going to be working on but on the bigger things then you know, we're, we're all interested. That's certainly when we went from uh, subcommittees back to committee of the whole, the argument was that there's some big decisions being made at uh, subcommittees that not all the councillors understood because half of us were on that those committees and half weren't. And there's a lot of detail that gets uh, discussed at uh, the, the uh, was getting discussed, does get discussed at now committee of the whole. So m maybe we should get a report back on, on looking at how we divide the um, Councillor Millen. Thank you, Mr. Warden. And, and what Councillor Body suggesting makes a lot of sense. Although, in response to Councillor Mackey, I, I understand there is a lot of detail, the day to day details of looking after long term care. Um, but I would caution anybody if you don't think you're interested in those kinds of details, you should be. I remember a former CAO saying that while you are a county councillor and you may think that it's all social services in those days that looked after long-term care, ultimately council is responsible for the lives and the well-being of those people in those long-term care facilities. And if you're not interested in that, you better find a different committee to be on. And uh, I think everyone better take that to heart that we are responsible for those people in those facilities. But I, I would support what Councillor Body is suggesting. And I, do you want a separate motion to bring a report of that nature back? We'll staff approve. Thank you. Okay. So any other comments then with regards to the, the back to the full motion that's ahead of us here. So any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? That's carried. All right, so I guess we're up to thanks, uh, Heather. And thanks, Kim. Other business? Is there any other business? Okay. Uh, notice of motions. Are there any notice of motions? I got uh, Councillor Hex. Thank you, Mr. Warden. I wish to give notice of a motion I intend to bring regarding establishment of a task force to deal with specific issues in the town of Hanover and the city of Owen Sound. Okay, uh, Councilor Burley. Thank you, Mr. Ward. I would, uh... Thank you, Mr. Ward. And, uh, I would like to bring a notice of motion to form a task force for a housing for Gray County. Councillor Desai. Sorry. Um, thank you, Mr. Warden. I'd like to bring forward a notice of motion, uh, or provide notice for a motion um, uh, regarding establishment of a task force on climate change. Thank you. Is there, I guess there's no other business? I need one more motion. Councillor Carlton, Councillor Gamble. All in favor? That's carried. Thank you very much. Oh,